Hey guys, in this video we are going to build a little spin the bottle game. So when we click this bottle image here, it spins into a random direction. It will be pretty quick and easy and I will put the link to the code of this example into the description box. There you can also download these two images, the background and the bottle image. We start with a fresh new Android Studio project and I'm going to call this spin the bottle. I keep the company name as it is, the project location as well. And the app name and the company name together build this package name. If you just build the app for yourself, the package name doesn't matter. But if you want to upload an app to Google Play, then you have to make sure that this package name is unique. So it's usually good practice to take your own company name, because it's very unlikely that someone else chooses this for his package name. When that's done, we click next. Here I'm gonna keep the min API level at 19, which at the moment of this video reaches about 90% of devices, which is enough. Again, we click next. And here we choose empty activity. Next. We keep the activity name as it is, keep generate layout file ticked and the rest as it is as well. And we click finish. Now we have to wait a short moment until this project is generated. And when it's finished, we are ready to go. First, we have to add our images to this project. Again, you can download these images from the link in the description box. I mark them, press Ctrl Z to copy them, go into Android Studio into this app folder here, into res, we open drawable, and now we click on drawable and press Control v to paste these two images. Here we click OK, here we click OK as well, and now our images are in this drawable folder here and we can use them in our app. So the next thing we have to do is prepare our layouts. We click on this activity underscore main.xml tab here, and down here we make sure that we are in the text tab. Then we delete this text view because we won't need it. Then we change this constraint layout into relative layout because it's easier to use for this tutorial. Then we add another attribute to this relative layout which has the name Android colon background. And here we search for this at drawable slash floor because this is the image that we want to use for the background. When that's done, we go into this relative layout before this closing tag here, write opening angle bracket image view. We set a fixed width and height of 300 dp times 300 dp. dp stands for density independent pixels and make sure that this image has the same size on devices with different screen resolutions. Then we add another attribute android colon src and here we pass this at drawable slash bottle for our bottle image. Now we can see our bottle but it's at the wrong position. To get it into the center of this layout we pass another attribute Android colon layout underscore center and parent and we set this to true. And as the name implies, now it's centered in this relative layout. And two more attributes. One is Android colon on click. Here we can define what Java method we want to call when we click this image and we want to call spin bottle. This is the method we will later create where we spin this bottle image. Until now we get this warning because we didn't create this method yet. And one more attribute, Android colon idea add plus id slash and here we can define an id for this image view. So we can find it later in Java code and do stuff with it. And we simply give it the name bottle. Okay and that's already it for our layout. Now we go into our main activity Java file and take care of the Java code. First we go at the top here below this first line which says public class main activity and we create four member variables. We set them all to private because we only need them within this class. The first one is a variable for our image view and here we call it bottle as well, semicolon. The next one is private random, which is a random number generator. We call the variable random as well, equals new random, semicolon. And two more, private int for integer, we call it last dir, and private boolean spinning. You will see what these two variables are for in a moment. Next we go into our uncreate method here, before this closing curly bracket, and we have to assign our image view variable. Bottle equals find view by idea r dot id dot, and here we pass the id that we gave our image view in the XML file, and we named it bottle with this id attribute. Okay, and now outside of this uncreate method, we want to create this spin bottle method, which we set as the onclick attribute for our image view. We write public void. We called it spin bottle. It has to be the same name as we said in our XML layout. Parenthesis, and here we write view 
and we call it V. Since we set this method as the attribute in our XML layout file, it has to take a view V as an argument, otherwise it will crash. And this view is the view that was clicked. So it's our image view basically. This is just something we have to do. Curly braces. And in here we want to spin our bottle image. First we have to generate a direction in which we wanted to point when the animation is over. So we create an integer for this. We call it new dir equals. Then we take our random variable, which is our random number generator. Call dot next int, which generates a random number. And between these parentheses we write 1800 as a number, semicolon. And this will generate a random number between 0 and 1800. When we then start our animation, we have to tell it around which point we want to animate our image view. And we want to animate it around the middle. So we create two variables, float, we call the first one pivot x equals, then we take our bottle, which is our image view, dot get width, and we divide this by two. This will get the middle in the width. And we do the same for the height, float, pivot y equals bottle, dot get height this time, and we divide this by two as well. Don't get scared by these two values. It looks complicated, but it really isn't. We only need these two values to get the middle of our image view, and that's all. And now we create our actual animation. Animation, this one, android.view.animation. We call it rotate equals new rotate animation. In here we have to pass the starting direction of our image view, the end direction, and these two pivot variables we created. For the starting direction, we pass our last dir variable, which at the start of our app is set to zero, comma, then we pass our new dir, which is a random number between zero and 1800, and 1800 divided by 360 is five. So we spin our bottle between zero and five rounds. If you increase this 1800 value, you can spin more rounds, comma, then we pass our pivot x and pivot y. That's it. Now we take this rotate animation and call dot set duration and as the name implies here we can pass the duration in milliseconds. We're gonna choose 2.5 seconds which is 2500 milliseconds. Next then we write rotate dot set fell after and we pass true. This means that we want to keep the image view as it is after our animation. We don't want to reset it to its initial direction. Otherwise it would always go back to pointing to the top after the animation ends. Then we take our last DI variable and set it to new DI. This means the next time we start a new animation, we don't start at zero, but we start at our new DI position. Otherwise the bottle would always start pointing to the top, which we don't want. We want it to point to the position where we start our last animation. And lastly we call bottle.startAnimation and pass our rotate variable, which is our rotate animation. Okay, and like this it would already work. Now the problem is when we click this bottle again while it's still rotating, we will immediately start our new animation and it will start at the new direction. So it will look very choppy and ugly. So what we're gonna to do is we're gonna disable this method while the bottle is still rotating. We only want to be able to start a new animation when the previous one finished. For this we created this spinning boolean. So we go all the way at the top of this spin bottle method and check if parentheses. Here we write exclamation mark spinning, which means that the if block will only be executed if spinning is set to false. Opening angle bracket, and we put the closing angle bracket after our start animation method call. So now we only execute this part if spinning is set to false. When we start our app, spinning will be set to false, but we need a spot to set it to true and then reset it to false. And for this we take our rotate variable again and call dot set animation listener and in here we pass a new animation dot animation listener and when we pick this we get these three callback methods here on animation start on animation end and on animation repeat we care about these two here on animation start and end because these will be called when as the name implies our animation starts or ends when the animation starts we want to set spinning to true because our bottle is spinning and when the animation ends we want to set spinning to false again. And now we won't be able to start a new animation while our animation is running, only after it ends. Let's test it. There's our bottle, gonna click it. And our animation starts. Click it again. And it's working. 
it always starts a new animation where it ended the previous one and it always points into a random direction. Sometimes it spins to the right, sometimes it spins to the left, depending on the starting and the ending direction. If this video was helpful, please leave a like, and if you want more into tutorials, don't forget to subscribe. Take care.